In this video, I want to talk a little bit about quantum theory and quantum numbers. Uh, quantum theory is quite rich and complex, so this video is going to be a light introduction to quantum theory. So first off, let's take a look at the shapes of space the electrons might be in around the nucleus that quantum theory predicts. There's the S shape, the P shape, the D, and the F shape. These shapes are called atomic orbitals, and they're centered around the nucleus. The third column includes the number of orientations of the shape. The S atomic orbital is spherical, so there's one orientation. Because of the shape of the P atomic orbital, there are three orientations. And with the D, it gets more complex, and there's five. And with the F, it's even more complex, and there's actually seven orientations. So let's take a look at all the different orientations of these atomic orbitals. Here we see the one orientation of the S and the three ways to position the P shape on the X, Y, and the Z axis. And you can see it for the D, things get a little more complicated. And then of course for the F, it looks really complicated. So remember, at the center of the coordinate axis is the nucleus. And so these shapes of space are oriented around the nucleus. Also, I want to point out that for all of these orientations, quantum theory predicts that a maximum of two electrons occupy each orientation. These atomic orbitals are shapes of space around the nucleus where electrons are most likely found. The fourth column indicates the maximum number of electrons per orientation, as I mentioned earlier. The last column is the total maximum electrons for all the orientations of a particular atomic orbital type. So the max for the S is 2, the max for the P is 6, and D 10, and the F 14. If you look at the number of orientations column and the maximum electrons per orientation, you multiply them, you'll get the maximum number of electrons per atomic orbital type. Let's take a look at the electron accounting with the orbitals in a visual manner. So in the S, we have one orientation, so there's a total of two electrons. And in each P, there's two electrons per orientation, so we get a total of six. And then two, 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 and two for ten. And then each F gets two max, and we get the totals of two, six, ten, and fourteen. The electrons that occupy these atomic orbitals get assigned specific quantum numbers, and the quantum numbers are n, l, m sub l, and m sub s. That's the principal quantum number, the angular momentum number, the magnetic momentum number, and the spin number. I'll try to explain all four of these numbers in a little bit more practical terms. First off, the principal quantum number is associated with the energy of the electron. The higher the principal quantum number, the greater the kinetic energy of the electron. And the principal quantum number is directly related to the periods in the periodic table. Let's take a look. The arrangement of the periodic table, even before quantum physics was fully developed, did not differ very much from what we see today. It's pretty amazing that the periodic table can be divided into regions according to atomic orbital type. For example, there's the S region, the D, the P, and the F region. And this is a pretty spectacular arrangement because the S region occupies the first two groups. And remember, there are a maximum of two electrons in each S orbital. The P region occupies the last six groups in the periodic table. And remember, there's a maximum of six electrons in the P atomic orbitals. And the D region is in the middle of the periodic table, and it occupies 10 columns. And remember, there's a maximum of 10 electrons in the D atomic orbitals. And the F occupies 14 columns in the periodic table. 
And again, remember, there's 14 electrons max for the d-atomic orbital. So let's focus on the principal quantum number and how I mentioned earlier, it was directly related to the periods in the periodic table, periods one through seven. Now notice there is a offset in the D region and in the F. Notice that all of the principal quantum numbers for the D are offset by one and the principal quantum number and the principal quantum numbers associated for the F are offset by two. So let's connect this list of principal quantum numbers to this periodic table with these regions. As we can see, the principal quantum numbers for the S are 1 through 7, and they're right here. And for the P, 2 through 6. And for the D, 3 through 6. And for the F, 4 through 5. Next, let's talk about the angular momentum number, L. Practically speaking, that's the shape quantum number. In other words, the shape of space around the nucleus. The L quantum number for S is zero. The L quantum number for all three P orientations is one. The L quantum number for D is two. And the L quantum number for all 14 orientations of the F are, is three. We could summarize using this visual, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Next, let's take a look at the m sub l quantum number. Practically speaking, this is the quantum number for the orientations of the particular atomic orbital. And the list goes 0 for s, negative 1, 0, positive 1 for P, negative 2 up to positive 2 for D, and negative 3 up to positive 3 for F. Now recall there's one orientation for the S, and there's one M sub L for the S. There's three orientations for the P, and there are three M sub L quantum numbers. There are five orientations for the D, and five M sub L quantum numbers seven orientations for the F, and seven M sub L quantum numbers. If we take a careful look at this figure, we could see the M sub L quantum numbers. For P, negative one, zero, positive one. D, negative two up to positive two. And for F, negative three up to positive three. One view of electrons proposed by quantum physics is that they are particles, each with their own spin. The electron can spin clockwise and counterclockwise, therefore be assigned a particular m sub s quantum number, plus one half or minus one half. Here are a couple questions relating to quantum numbers. So for a value of n equals four, principal quantum four, what are all the possible quantum numbers for L? Well, let's see, there's an n of four here, here, here and here. Well, that means we can have L quantum numbers of 0 through 3. So the answer here, if you want to type it in, is 0, 1, 2, and 3. For an L of 2, which is right here, what is the range of values for M sub L? Well, that would be right here, negative 2 up to positive 2. Here you're asked to identify the subshell in which electrons with the following quantum numbers are found. A subshell is an expression of the principal quantum number and the orbital type, meaning S, P, D, or F. Here we have principal quantum number 4 and angular momentum quantum number L of 3. The principal quantum number N is 4. Atomic orbital associated with L of 3 is F. So the answer is 4F. Which of the following is a possible set of quantum numbers? So reading these numbers left to right, it's N, L, M sub L, M sub S. So the first one, 3, let's see, 3. The next one is L of 2. Can we have 3 in L of 2? Yes, because there's 3. So we have 2 there, good. 
and we could have negative 2, that's good, and we could have a negative 1 half. So this is the answer. Well, let's take a look at the other four to see why they are not possible sets of quantum numbers. Let's see, uh, n of 3, looking at the second one, and then the L of 3, well, an L of 3 does not have a quantum number of n associated with it, so that's why this is not possible. The next one, 2, negative 1, well, right off the bat, L quantum number cannot be negative. Here, the fourth one, L of 0, well, we have 4 and 0, that's okay, but the M sub L must be 0. So interesting, whenever you're talking about the S orbital, which is the L of 0, the M sub L must be 0 because there's only one orientation. So this is not correct, this, atom, uh, this quantum number right here, the 1. Let's see, uh, quantum number, principle of quantum number 2, all right, L of 1, so we're right here. And the M sub L cannot be negative 2. If you're talking about an L quantum number of 1, there's no negative 2 for the M sub L. So that's why this one is not a valid set. Same question, different set of numbers. Let's focus on the L quantum number. That way we'll be positioned in a particular spot in this table. So first off, we have the L quantum number of 3. So we are here. Let's see what the proposal is. In n of 4, that's okay. A m sub l of positive 2, that's okay. And a m sub s of negative 1 half. So the first one is the correct answer. Well, let's proceed and see why these others are not. Again, the strategy is to focus on the l so we could be positioned in the table. So we have an L of 2, okay, uh, N of 2, well, there is no N of 2 for an L of 2, so this is not valid. Next one, uh, we're still on N of 2, and yes, we could have an N of 4, so, so far so good. Can we have an M sub L of 3? Uh, no, the lowest we're going here is negative 2, so this right here is the problem in this set. This last one, L of 2 again, so we're still here, and we can have an L, uh, excuse me, an N of 4, and we cannot have a M sub L of negative 3. This is identical to the previous set, except this last one is negative 1 half and this one was positive 1 half. So again, the problem here and this particular set is the M sub L number. What is the maximum number of electrons that can occupy a subshell where N equals 3 and L equals 2? Just as a reminder, the L of 2 is the D. So the specific subshell we're referring to here is 3D. So remember the D has five orientations, and the maximum number of electrons that could occupy those five orientations is 10. If you look at this table, for an L quantum number of 2, here are the five orientations given here, and there are five different M sub L quantum numbers. 